Hello, my name is Thomas McGee, and today we're going to talk about the new text editor in WordPress 5.0. Okay, so if you're a WordPress user like me, you may have noticed after updating WordPress recently to version 5.0 that there is an all new text editor. It's been completely redesigned and reimagined uh, quite dramatically from what it was before. So before you probably knew a text editor as something like a slimmer, smaller, thinner version of Microsoft Word, or it was pretty much a blank canvas and it had the normal thing like italics and bold and block quotes and even adding images and moving them around in different places that align with the text. But the new editor on the other hand is quite different. It's kind of a block based editor that harkens a little bit more towards a lot of the page builders that we see out there that are created by third parties for WordPress. So there's a pretty wide variety of responses and reactions to this editor. Some people are really positive to the new editor, and then there's other people who just so happen to be like myself who aren't quite as keen on the new editor. So today what I wanted to do is take a little bit of time just to tell you why I'm not a huge fan of it, and if you're like me and you're not a fan either, how you can maintain the old editor moving forward. Okay, so the biggest reason I'm not a huge fan of the new editor is that when it comes to creating content in WordPress, there's two main types. Now, some themes go beyond this, but in terms of WordPress itself, there's two main types of content. We've got pages, which are going to be pretty static. They're going to think, be things like, you know, about us, about the company, or, you know, terms of service, things that really don't change that often. And you're not necessarily creating new pages on a schedule, right? You just kind of create your core pages and maybe every now and then you add a new one. Now posts on the other hand, posts are the core content. If I'm you know, running a news website, I'm creating new posts every single day. Every single time I create a new news story, I'm creating a new post. If I'm a blogger, every single time I've got a new blog post entry, I'm going to be entering a new post. If I'm a podcaster, every single new podcast episode is going to be a new post. Now in that context, for people who are writing, this goes a little bit outside of someone who say is a podcaster or who does videos. But if you're a writer, if you're somebody who is writing heavily and you use WordPress to that end, this new editor doesn't really help you do that. In fact, it kind of hinders it a little bit because what they give you is a bunch of building blocks, right? And so you're creating a page, you're almost laying out a page, whether you wanna do columns, you wanna do a block quote, or whether you wanna do an image gallery or something like that, where most of us, when we are writing a new piece of content, like a blog post, for example, we just need headings, italics, bolds, paragraph, and maybe every now and then a block quote, and maybe an image. The new editor, however, allows you to drag things around, which is great if you're building out a page, but when you're writing, those things can kind of get in the way. So for me personally, I use an app called Bear to do a lot of my writings, and I use Bear specifically because it is such a clean and easy to use writing experience. When we're doing the very thing of writing, right? We're trying to get information out of our head and onto the screen as quickly as we can. The more distractions, the more things that prevent us from doing that effectively only hinder us from creating good work. Now, if we're going to go through and we want to create a page on the other hand, maybe it's more likely then that we would want something like columns. We would want something like image galleries or something like that. But again, that leads me to my next reason why I'm not a huge fan of the editor is that 99% of us don't need all those features. They might look great, it might be neat that you can create three columns and create icons in those columns and lay out a really neat post that looks great, but at the end of the day, most of us just don't need that. It serves a purpose or it tries to solve a problem that doesn't really exist. So those are some of the main concerns I have with it. I think it just kind of gets in the way of a writing workflow. I think it would be a great idea if it were just left over on the pages side, or even if it's something you could just really easily turn on and off in WordPress. But unfortunately, it looks like it's here to stay. However, if you're like me and you really like the classic editor and it works well for you, here's how you can actually maintain that old classic editor moving forward. So all you have to do if you're interested in using the classic editor as it is called is just click on plugins. 
Uh, and then we want to go to add new. And what you're going to see here is that they actually have this plugin right here. Now I have already installed it. So all I would have to do is activate it. But if for whatever reason you're watching this video and it's not here on the front page anymore, all you have to do is just go ahead and type classic editor and it's always going to appear. Uh, from what I have read, WordPress does plan to continue its support for the classic editor. So uh, you should be good uh, moving forward. If like me, you're not a huge fan of the new editor and you want to keep using this one. So here's just a quick look of, uh, of what I mean. If we jump over to post and we go to the sample post that comes standard with WordPress, you'll see here that it's, like I said, very block based. So if you start writing another, uh, you know, hit enter and you start writing another paragraph, you'll see that it's very blocky. So if, uh, you know, if you're, if you're writing a big, long, you know, dissertation or something like that, a really long article, you have to get used a little bit to starting to edit things like this. Now, some people might like it. Some people, you know, maybe will get used to it, but it's a very non-standard, a little bit of a clunky way to write, right? We're so used to being able to just kind of click and, you know, italic and bold and all that's still here, but it's, you have to work within this kind of block format, which for some people may work, but for others, uh, it may not. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to delete this kind of keep it back to where it was. And there's a lot of different changes here in the sidebar. I noticed that it's now collapsible. Um, the different changes that have been made to the overall style just of the UI, the user interface here, a um, little bit different, but in terms of the actual functionality of WordPress, a lot of it has been retained. It just looks different. The block editor is the largest thing that has changed. And again, you can see here that you can add all these different things, a file, a cover, an audio. Again, these are all things that are meant to build a web page, not to write a piece of content. And so that's, like I said, I won't harp on it too much, but that's kind of the, the main issue that a, a lot of folks have with the new editor. So all we have to do here is just head back over to plugins. And since we have already uh, installed it, uh, all we have to do is under classic editor, click activate, jump back over to posts, Click on hello world and we'll see we have the old editor uh, back to the way that it was. Now, one of the things I will mention is that you have to be careful if you start creating content in the new editor and then try to switch back to the old, you could see some formatting issues as we can see some here uh, in this particular example. So you wanna be very careful to make sure that if you're gonna use the classic editor, make sure you switch over to that as soon as possible because I do know that the classic editor posts will be maintained in the new editor, but not vice versa. So you wanna be really careful there. Okay, so hopefully you found this useful. As always, uh, I would like to hear from you. So feel free to scroll on down and leave me a comment. What do you think about the new editor? Are you gonna use the new version 5.0 editor or are you gonna, like me and a lot of other people, are you gonna to continue to use the classic editor? I would love to hear your thoughts. If you did find this useful, hit that like button. And as always, subscribe if you're not already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.